So now that we've gone through sample code for users and events, I'd like to take a little bit of time talking about the various API endpoints we have around authentication and authorization. In this section, we'll talk a little bit about some of the different ways you can either authenticate or authorize a user. We'll talk a little bit about how you can invoke MFA using our APIs. We'll talk a little bit about how you can create a login facade. Um, we'll talk a little bit about how cores work, and we'll also talk about a SAML assertion code sample. Now, people often talk about authentication versus authorization. Authentication is simply a way of determining is a user who they say they are. The best mechanism to use this is to use the create session token endpoint. This is a post operation. Here you pass in the username or email, their password, what subdomain your particular user is on, in other words, what's your account, and then optionally you could pass in an IP address. This is important if you have certain IP addresses uh, whitelisted to not include MFA and other IP addresses do require MFA. If this succeeds, this will return a valid session token confirming the user's credentials, or potentially this endpoint will return additional details if MFA is required for authentication. This call essentially confirms the user's identity and credential, but it doesn't return any details on what the particular user is authorized to access. So here's what it looks like. You'll be doing a POST operation, and this assumes you have a valid bearer token that you got through the OAuth flow. As part of the payload, it'll, you'll be passing in username or email, what the user's password is, and what your subdomain is. And as always, the headers will be the content type that we've seen before, along with the familiar bearer token with your current access token. If this succeeds, you'll get a 200 error message, and it'll actually return some information about the users, specifically details about their username, their email, their first name, last name, and most importantly, their user ID. Authorization is essentially a way of determining is a user who they say they are, and are they allowed to access a particular application? The best mechanism to determine this is to use the SAML assertion endpoint. This functions very similarly to the previous endpoint, except in addition to the username and password, you also pass in an application ID. If this succeeds, this returns a SAML assertion, confirming not just the user's credentials, but also their ability to access the application in question. Or potentially, this may return details on the, providing additional MFA if you want to fully authorize the user. This confirms the user's identity, credentials, and returns the detail that the user is permitted to access this particular application. Again, this takes a very similar payload to the previous call. We include the username or email, their password, and also the app ID. If this succeeds, you'll get this return code, as well as an actual uh, SAML response. These responses are useful, especially if you're trying to set up a command line interface to AWS. Now, what happens if multi-factor is required? In this case, both the create session login token and the generate SAML assertion code will function more or less the same. If MFA is required, a callback URL is generated to verify one of the available devices on the user's profile. Since a user can have more than one MFA device available, the information returned from this is somewhat complex. So as before, we see it's a 200 success message. However, the message coming back will be MFA is required for this user. Within the data returned, we similarly return the user information, but we also return certain information needed to make additional calls to invoke MFA for a particular device. Now the endpoint you call will depend on what the initial endpoint you were calling from, i.e., were you trying to log in the user or were you trying to generate a SAML assertion for the user, but you pass in the details that were returned from the previous call. You use the state token, the callback URL, and the device ID from the previous call and pass that in. 
Sometimes the status code is simply, I've sent an SMS token to your mobile device, and authentication is pending. So the first call to this endpoint will simply send off the SMS token. Once the user has an SMS token, they can, make, they can repeat this call, passing in the actual code that they received. Another thing they can do is trigger one login's OTP push. In this case, the status message will continually return waiting for authentication from the user until the user actually goes to their MFA device and hits authorize. Next up, we're going to talk a little bit about how to generate your own login page. If, for example, you don't want your users to see the one login page, you can write your own. This is as simple as using the create session token via API method. However, one thing to realize is that your server is talking to the one login APIs via the backend. Whereas in order to establish a session with one login, you need to actually direct the user's browser to one login in order for the cookies to be set properly. So essentially, imagine starting in the user's browser. You've built a login facade for them to use. The user enters their username and password into your facade, which are then passed back to your backend server. You call our APIs to create a session token with the username and password, and if successful, we will return a session token to you. However, this session token needs to make its way forward up to the user's browser. So as part of your login facade, you would reload the page, embedding the session token into either a form, or into some JavaScript if you're using a CORS request. You then make a call to the special one login session via API token method. This API is different from the endpoints that you've seen so far today, insofar as it doesn't take any sort of access token. Instead, it takes a one-time session token that was generated by this API. By passing that info into one login and directing the user's browser to one login, one login is able to start a session and insert the proper session cookies into the user's browser. This then creates a session with one login. So any other calls to other applications, the user will have a single sign-on session established with one login and will be good to go. Now in the previous example, I mentioned cores. Normally, you're not allowed to make cross-domain post operations to other websites unless they've been expressly allowed by those domains. The way we do this is you pass in your domain into the create session call. If you remember from the previous slide, that's this backend call you're making to us. So as part of that information, you're going to pass in the actual URL of the login facade that you're using. By passing in your domain into the create session call, one login will allow your domain to call our API endpoint, but only for the token you created. So when you made that call, you pass in a custom allowed origin header and your specific login page. This way, when we see a cross-domain call being made from this login page, along with the actual token that you're passing to us, we're able to match up that token to that domain and say, OK, we'll allow this cross-domain API call to take place. So in this case, you're creating the one login session by hitting admin.onelogin.com session via API token. You'll notice this looks very different from our other API endpoints. If you're doing this by a simple HTTP form post, you have to make your own little form within HTML with a hidden input type with, that has the name session token. And here's where you pay, place that one-time use session token that you created via the backend call. This is simply a submit operation, and finally, an auth token of type hidden. If you post this to us, we will either accept or deny this request. But either way, we will redirect immediately back to the endpoint that this call came from. In other words, we'll redirect back to your login facade. It should be added that this 
endpoint also allows you to do other things, like redirect to other places after the form post submit has occurred. Alternatively, it's much simpler to make this call via JavaScript. In this case, you have some JavaScript function that says make a course call, where you set up a new uh, XHR request. XHR with credentials is set to true. You set it to the URL where you can create a session via the token. And in this case, as part of the body, you simply set your session token to the session token that was returned from the back end. That concludes our training.